Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of Dude, you gotta check this out. Looking at a track from, it's probably D-Y-L, but every part of my being just wants to call it Dill. Now I want pickles. We're going to look at the track from D-Y-L called Gimli, off of the album A Requiem for the Future. I really like that artwork, by the way. It's beautiful, um, and it looks like it's all done in graphite pencil. Just very detailed, very well done, and yeah, the idea of just camping, uh, got a nice fire going, and then just the universe being so close. Let's dive in, see what's going on with Gimli. All my life I've been dreaming Found solace in the fact that Nobody could reach me I think you'll find what you think you really wanted Is there any modulation on the vocals? The there certainly is on that Very cool production on all of this. Dude, the sub bass on this is ridiculous. That sounds a bit more of his natural range. I think the opening was pitch shifted down. Having the organ, I think it is, playing the same melody as what he's singing is a really nice layering effect. We got a little bit of vocal harmony over here. You are every part of me. Sweet are the voices in the lost I'll call it. Long are the waves on the last shore.
That's just gorgeous. Beautiful swell into this idea. All the layers, it's just so good. I don't think there's been much change on the foundational element. It's just that all the layers have added new ideas, allowing it to have this natural evolution. Even the synth pad over here feels like the remnants of where we were still drifting off. We haven't gone too far from it, still hearing it echo in the distance. Yeah. Beautiful little melody here, using chords to the craft foundation under it while still working within the melody of it. I mean, that's like solo piano 101, but still. <laughs> It's, uh, it's executed really well. Yeah, it's so warm and inviting. Classic run down to resolution. I was gonna say, still got 90 seconds. That feels like an ending, though. Anybody else getting uh, Pink Floyd vibes? So that was a fun little ride because there is a core slow burn to that that takes place what like a minute in up until the six minute mark and then we pull back the layers we do an ending that leads into a second ending I kind of view this song as the intro the meat of the track the slow burn and then the outro, where the outro is a type of inversion of the intro, while also 
kind of setting us up for that second outro, which I thought was, it's a choice. <laughs> uh, all right. So I want to go through some of my initial thoughts listening to this because we kick it off and there's some really wild production stuff going on. Uh, I enjoyed the mixing of everything, the placement of ideas, the transitions we had between some of those introductory concepts before we hit the beginning of the slow burn uh, when the the set when the main vocal came in. Basically the opening 90 seconds. Uh, you know we have um, those pitch shifted downward vocal styles that are when did this come out because those are very popular these days. 2022 so yep definitely within the realm of modern music we also have the pitch shifted upwards the auto-tune sound in here basically just a lot of production techniques that create a very high fidelity sound with great imaging and spacing and placement and mixing and everything there's a lot of timbres that kick off the opening minute or so and it's all put together really well and I thought we were in store for an electronic track. And I was getting ready to get in the mindset of listening more for production and hooks than really anything else. Really aiming to check out what's going on on the fringe of the sound. Listening for the, uh, the twinkling, the embellishing ideas, the ornamental concepts. That to me is where pop stands out the most as far as a critical lens. Because if you just look at the harmony chord progression even the melody sometimes there's not really a lot to dig into on the pop side uh, usually you want to look more at vocal technique which is very prominent within pop music and production technique those are the two places where you'll find technical expertise within that realm but then as soon as this section left we kind of ditched a lot of that it crept back up for sure. The mixing, the placement, the production, all of that um, comes into play somehow. But we enter into almost like an indie rock slow burn at this point. If not indie rock, then at least singer-songwriter. I found this to be fascinating because it's not like they ditched the original intent. It's not like we were faked out by the intro. It's just that the intro hyper-focused on one aspect that wasn't what the song was. It was just a portion of what the song was. And I find that fascinating. I do. It's, it sets you up for one way. Sort of fakes you out and does a trick, but it does so in a way that I think works. Because retroactively, once you finish the track, you realize just how well the beginning fits with the rest of the song. It isn't a fake out like it seemed in the moment. Really great writing. From there, though, we hit the slow burn and I readjust my expectations. Here, it's all about layers and, eventually, production. There are so many ornamental concepts that come in here. New synth pads, new acoustic, at least sounding instruments. The rhythmic ideas begin simple, and then new ones come in that bounce off of what the first one did. And then a third one comes in and it compounds and mixes all of it and complicates it. That's what the slow burn is to me. There is a lot of beauty in it harmonically, uh, texture-wise, timbre-wise. The instruments are gorgeous. What they're playing is gorgeous. There's a lot of great harmonic ideas in here. It's not without tension. You need tension to drive chord progression, but the tension isn't the focus. It's a spice. And so the entire thing just comes off as effortlessly beautiful, but about halfway through, it becomes very complicated, very complex. It doesn't reach a point of wall of sound or muddled mess or anything like that. Thanks a lot to the composition, but also I think a lot more weight is put on the production of it to ensure that there's room for everything, space for everything, that kind of stuff. But it becomes a cluttered mess. No. <laughs> I mean, yes, a lot of work is put in to make sure it doesn't 
fall apart, but there does get to a point where there is a lot of ideas going off at once, and it begins to feel like like a party. It's not so much that you need to take the whole party in at one time. If you listen to every bit of this song, it's going to sound messy. But parties exist in pockets. These three people having a conversation. These eight people where one person's telling a story to an audience of seven. These two people slow dancing over here in the corner. The party noise is a conglomeration of all of this. But if you're in any of these pockets, it really isn't a noisy environment. Loud, yes. But noisy? No, you can very much focus on who you're talking to and have a conversation within it. You can enjoy yourself. You can even, at times, if you're in that good of a mood, if the dance is that good, if your dance partner is that good, forget everything around you, despite being one of the noisier places you could be. That's what the music feels like to me. There are pockets, groups of ideas that I think work really well together, they're just placed within the context of a lot of other stuff. And so basically, if you just kind of focus off in this corner, or focus off in that corner, you can find some really great sections. If you try to take it all in at once, you've got like 25, 26 layers being thrust at you. It's really difficult to make sense of all of that. From here, we kind of flush all that down to vocals and one harmony line i think it was oh no we had the uh, the piano solo that's what it was and then the vocals came on top of that and gave us this really neat clean bow on the top of all of this a nice present wrapped up except they weren't content with stopping there and this is where a bit of my confusion stems from the song had a beautiful rundown to a very solid, resolute conclusion, and then silence. And then with 90 seconds left, they played some more. And this part did too also have a bit of a conclusion to it, and also transformed and evolved into this field recording of, I don't know, some sort of party? That might be where I got my ideas of a party earlier. I'm not sure. I was def probably influenced by it. Yeah, that makes sense. And then crossfade to static and cut. This is also the last track on the album. So that cut is not just how the song wraps up. It is how the album wraps up. I'm not quite sure what to make of this finale. Or at least the second half of it. I think that the intro into the slow burn, into that first ending, is a beautiful little conclusion to... Or I think it's a beautiful experience overall, with a nice ending that takes us into a new idea that envelops so many cool concepts and ties it all up cohesively with a nice bow on top. The little straggling concept at the end, the final 80 seconds, makes... No sense to me. But given how masterful everything else is, how intentional every other piece is placed in this puzzle, I have to put faith in DYL. That the ending is supposed to mean something too, and I'm just not seeing it. So, let's go find some more context. I'm going to read some lyrics and see if that can guide me in any direction that helps me better understand the musical decision for the outro of this track. Unfortunately, these did not pave the way to new understanding. Verse 1 paints the picture of somebody who is lost in life, hoping to find happiness or even just comfort somewhere and Never really getting that. It says, all my life I've been dreaming, found solace in the fact that nobody could reach me. I enjoyed being alone. I think you'll find what you think you really wanted. I stared deep into the abyss and then departed. I 
Verse 2 starts off the same way that verse 3 does later. Everything is everything. It is the only repeated line, mostly, in the whole track. That gives it import, and I don't know why. I don't know what it's supposed to represent, because on the surface it seems straightforward to me. There is, it's possible there's a philosophical element to it that I'm missing, but yeah, everything is everything. Like I, A equals A, man. That's just math. But I'm sure that's a failing of mine and not a failing of the, vo the lyricists. He says, that brought me to my knees, but I could never drown it out, a hero's call. My soul is yours, I'll meet you on the seas, you are every part of me. This is where I begin to lose the thread. I could never drown out a hero's call. That part makes sense. Then we transition, we shift to my soul is yours, you are every part of me. I will do anything you want. Who is this you? How is this part of the hero's call? Is the hero's call in this just a journey for someone else? I don't know. Verse 3, again, starts, everything is everything. Surrounded by the sea, pulling me in every direction, but... Down, So I won't sink, I won't be overcome by the water, but I have direction, goals, everywhere. I don't know where to start. It says, I'm a long way home, but I'll conquer the unknown with wings under my feet. You are every part of me. I don't know which direction I'm going, but I have a lot of things to do, and I'm coming back to you when I'm done. Because you are every part of me. The chorus says, sweet are the voices in the lost isle calling, long are the waves on the last shore falling. I have no idea. We obviously have a nautical theme going on. Um, you know, we talked about staring into the abyss. If you've ever looked out at the ocean at nighttime, that's what it is. Um, also, the abyss could be the water, just looking down into the depths of it, not seeing the bottom. We have the idea of never being drowned out from verse 2. It says, I'll meet you on the seas in verse 2 as well. Uh, verse 3 says, surrounding by the seas, pulling in every direction. There is a nautical theme going on here, or at least a water-based one, if not nautical entirely. So the idea of lost isles and, lost and, uh, and waves on a shore makes sense thematically. I'm just not quite sure what the metaphor is pointing towards with this chorus. The outro then says, we are on the verge of an entirely new world. I dream of times when I can sleep easy, resting on your words. I will hold the line, hold you tight, for all times, always. And that is the last of the sung lines. So this person has come to this person that they said they would. They said, you know, I have a lot of stuff I need to do. And home's a long way away, but I'll conquer it all and come back to you because that's what I have to do. And now he has. Maybe. Because part of this is also a dream. I dream of times when I can sleep easy, when I can rest on your words. Until then, <clears throat> says I'll hold the line. Yeah, hold you tight for all times. Yeah, so maybe he did come up. I don't know. verge of an entirely new world. Here's where the big twist happens, though. The metaphor is dropped entirely. The ending sounds like a birthday party, presumably even a child's birthday party. There's a back and forth. I want the purple and red one. You know what you're supposed to do with those? I don't know. Now let's cut the cake in half. I love you. I don't know if those are the exact lines. I remember a child's voice somewhere in there. I remember adult voice. I remember lots of chit-chatting. The idea, though, is that it feels like a back and forth here. It's a birthday cake, right? Purple and red would be candles, cutting the cake, lots of people here, I love you. And this is where I kind of want to take it into the mindset of a parent. 
I will hold the line. I'll protect you from those who would wish you harm. I'll hold you tight for all times, always. And I dream of when things will be easier for us. But until then, I'm being pulled in every direction. You are every part of me. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Sweet are the voices in the lost style calling. There's lots of things that sound good to tempt me away from what I'm supposed to do here. The hero's calling to be a parent. I don't know. Maybe. I might just be reading into that. That's going to wrap this up. I don't know any way to bring that back into the music. We definitely had, uh, like I said, the party metaphor for that second uh, the part, the slow burn. And we do have a birthday party at the end, which maybe there's a similarity there, but maybe not. Maybe it's just the idea of growth. Quiet at the beginning. You raise a child that's cacophonous. There's more noise with every step of that. Every year brings more complications. Uh, and then you let them go into the world and things calm down a little bit. Bit of a bittersweet release. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on this track. DYL's Gimli. How does that work into things? Isn't Gimli a uh, Norse thing? A place, maybe? I don't remember. Should have looked that up. I don't know. If you want to look it up, let me know. <laughs> Put it in the comments. Let me know if you think that has anything to do with anything else going on in here. Otherwise, just give me your thoughts. Of, uh, 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 what's the word? Opinions? Perspectives? Any of that stuff perspective all that just toss it in the comments tell me what you thought about this because i've got a lot of questions and maybe you can help fill in some of the blanks i ran into above that in the description box you'll find a link to linktree it takes you here you can find links to my music ways to support the channel a link to the discord server and so much more above that if you could like subscribe and ring the bell i greatly appreciate all three of those that wraps it up for this one. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. As usual, we will continue on with this week's theme. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.